So I've been doing a lot of videos on higher fat, lower carb, macronutrient ratios for your nutrition goals. And I wanted to talk about how and why you would wanna do that. And one reason would be if you have insulin resistance. When your insulin goes up that high, what's going to end up happening is this is all gonna end up going in a fat cell instead of going in your muscle cell. Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Christine with Gage Girl Training, an online meal planning and coaching service. I'm a food scientist and chemical engineer by training. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about how to determine if you have insulin resistance. So let's get started. So I've been doing a lot of videos on higher fat, lower carb, macronutrient ratios for your nutrition goals. And I wanted to talk about how and why you would wanna do that. And one reason would be if you have insulin resistance. So insulin is a hormone that is released by the pancreas to help lower your blood sugar. So I wanna give you guys a very brief overview of what insulin resistance is. And I'm going to discuss some specific symptoms that you could be looking for to determine if you have this, as well as two specific tests that you can request that your doctor do for you to help you measure and quantitatively tell you whether or not this is a condition that you need to be worried about. So what is insulin resistance? So what happens you guys when you eat, when you eat carbohydrates, what it does is it increases your blood sugar. So let's assume this is your blood. And when you eat carbs, your blood sugar goes up. So let's assume each one of these dots is glucose in your blood. So what happens, here's your pancreas. Your pancreas is going to release insulin. Again, insulin is the hormone that lowers your blood sugar. How does it lower it? So insulin comes here. I'm gonna make an eye here for insulin. Insulin will grab on to each one of the sugar in your blood. It grabs onto the glucose and it shuttles it and it tries to put it over to your muscle cells. So it tries to take it and put it over here. So insulin is the hormone that will allow this to go into your cell, will allows the blood glucose to go into your cell so it can be used in the form of glycogen to create and generate ATP that will give you energy, that'll make you feel good. The problem is if insulin's doing its job, it's able to grab onto the blood sugar and go right on into your muscle. Great. However, there are some circumstances where some people, their muscle cells will not allow this to go in. So then your pancreas over here is confused and it's like, wait a minute, insulin, I told you to go take all the blood sugar out of the blood and put it in the muscle cells and it's not happening. So what's it gonna do? It's going to release more insulin, more insulin. So more and more and more insulin is going to be present trying to grab onto the blood sugar and put it in the muscle cells. And when that happens, when your insulin goes up that high, what's going to end up happening is this is all going to end up going in a fat cell instead of going in your muscle cell. So that's a problem. That's a problem for a couple reasons. The problem is you just ate carbs and if the glucose is not able to get into your muscle for energy, even though you just ate, you are gonna feel tired, you're gonna feel weak, you're gonna feel hungry, and your body is going to crave more sugar even though you just ate some. So that means you have insulin resistance. It is not able to get the glucose to go into your cells to generate ATP for energy. That's a problem. If that is happening to you, it can cause an increase in abdominal fat. It can cause some acne and larger pores. It can make you feel really hungry and give you lots of sugar cravings and it can increase your blood pressure. So if you are experiencing all of this, it would be wise for you to go on a lower carb type of a protocol, higher fat, and therefore minimizing your body to have these insulin spikes at least until you become more healthy and your body has a good level of insulin sensitivity. A good level of insulin sensitivity means, okay, there's glucose in your blood, 
your pancreas sends insulin to grab it and it can take it and put it in your muscle where it belongs. If you're healthy and there's no problems, that should happen on its own. So the thing is, there are two things I would recommend that you use to determine if this is actually going on with you. For those of you who don't want to speculate, you want to know facts. And the first thing I recommend is an A1C test. The A1C test is a test that will test for glucose bonded to hemoglobin in your blood. So hemoglobin is a protein molecule which is naturally found in your red blood cells. If glucose is bound to this, if there's a certain level of glucose bound to the hemoglobin, it will tell you that your blood sugar is higher than it needs to be and that you have some insulin resistance. Now a normal level is if you are at 5.7% and you want to be under 5.7%. So that is for the amount of glucose bonded to the hemoglobin. Now the nice thing about this test is it takes like a three month average. So for instance, if you just happen to have high blood sugar one week because you ate a lot of crap, and then it was lower the next week, the hemoglobin has a memory attached to it. So it will know all the nonsense that you did or didn't do to your body over the last three months. So if your A1C levels are between 5.7 and 6.4, you're in a pre-diabetic state and you definitely may want to start reeling it in with your nutrition because if you start getting above 6.4 on this level, your doctor will most likely put you on some kind of medication. And I am not telling you guys, this is not medical advice. This is not medical advice, I am not a doctor. But what I am telling you guys is there are ways that you can improve this with your nutrition. And there are ways that you can screen for this to make sure that you're healthy and that you're okay because diabetes is no joke. And so many people can avoid it by eating healthy by stopping eating so much nonsense and garbage and eating healthy. So another thing that you can measure is your blood sugar. So one thing I definitely want to urge you guys is that if you are going to have diabetes, being able to tell it in your blood sugar is probably gonna be one of the last places. And there is a debate on what a healthy blood sugar level is. Um, I would definitely say you'd wanna be under 80 milligrams per deciliter, however, if you start getting between 90 and 100, it's not bad per se, but it is kind of like a pre-diabetes range. If you start getting over 110, your doctor will probably want to start paying closer attention to you. But if you get over 126, 126 milligrams per deciliter, that is probably a point where your doctor will put you on some medication. So you guys, your health is no joke. This is not about vanity. This is about making sure that you are healthy. So for those of you who want to try these advanced protocols and whatnot, you are welcome to explore these things. But I strongly urge those of you who are seriously neglecting your health to wake up, to start paying attention because this is not a joke. This is not about like looking tiny and perfect in a bikini. This is about making sure that you can live a long and healthy life. And obviously the aesthetic benefits that come with getting healthy and lean are fantastic but I am very concerned about the health of a lot of people who have just been neglecting themselves so there are a lot of like you know symptoms that you can look for for insulin resistance but if you want to be 110% sure go get your A1C tested and find out for sure you can definitely request this when you get your blood work done at your doctor's office so again this is not medical advice I am not a doctor and I just wanted to remind you guys of that. This is just my general recommendations of things that you wanna be looking for, but have a conversation with your doctor. And I just wanted to get you guys pointed in the right direction. And I'm great to help you guys with nutrition protocols. I'm great to help you lose body fat, this, that, and the other. But when it comes to more serious things like this, you definitely want to be talking to a physician. So I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.